We just completed building this elegant looking plant stand from quarter sawn white oak lumber using a brown mission die. Here's how we built it. This project requires a full one inch thick stock. So you're gonna to need to take five quarter stock and plane it down to the one inch dimension. And we chose white oak. Set the stock aside for now and grab some material to make templates. We use 3 8 MDF, but quarter inch would likely work just as well. Use the gridded drawings provided to draw the leg and to create the template, refining the shape as you go. So use the template to transfer the shape of the leg into the hardwood, and then rough cut the shape of the leg using the bandsaw. Use the bandsaw to cut very close to the line, leaving a bit of material to be routed away later. Take your time and cut accurately. Now we're moving on to template routing the legs to their final shape. I've attached the template to the leg blank with double-sided tape. I've chucked a flush trim bit into the router table and set the depth to align the bearing with the template. The bearing will guide the router to match the shape of the template. Don't use the router to shape the ends of the legs. The danger of tear out is too great. With the legs done, we now move on to the center column. They're just small pieces of wood that will eventually join the legs together. I've laid out for a half lap joint, and now we're going to move on to cutting them. Forming the joints is a multi-step process. First, I removed most of the waste with the bandsaw. Then I moved on to the router table. I tested the cut on scrap stock, and then with a half inch diameter straight bit that has two inch cutting edges, I removed the remaining stock. The last bit of machining to do is to drill out for the beadlock system. It's a loose tenon system, it's easy to use, and provides rock solid joints. Now, glue and clamp the leg components together and move on to the curve supports. As I did with the legs, I'm using a template to help form the curve supports, but in this case, I'm not going to template route the final shape. As with the legs, I cut these out using the bandsaw, cutting very close to the line, and then sanded the pieces to their final shape. I made the half lap joints in the curved supports by cutting the sides of the joint on the bandsaw and then chiseling the waste away. A little bit of sanding and they're ready to go. The next piece that you need to make is the molding that will surround the subtop and frame the tile. Now, I made the rabbit in the molding on the table saw and then formed the bevel on the router table. Depending on the size of the tile you purchase, you may need to accommodate the dimensions in the molding. Finally, I made these triangular column accents and then I sanded them smooth and then I sanded the rest of the components smooth as well because now I'm going to apply some dye to add color to the wood. Why dye rather than pigment stain? The biggest reason is that I can add all the color I want now, but I don't have to mask the glue joints. I can glue this dyed wood together as if it were raw wood. The other reason, I just like the color control that dye affords. For this project, I chose to use Tight Bonds Quick and Thick Multi-Surface Glue for a few reasons. First of all, we're using multiple materials like the ceramic tile that we'll glue down later, in addition to wood and MDF. Secondly, its quick tack and high holding power has made glue ups in this particular project so much easier, especially when applying these corner column accents. All I do is put the glue on, Rub it up and down, get a tack, job's done. One of the last things I'm gonna do is add these tiny little feet to the bottom of each leg. They're just made of uh, eighth inch masonite. What I'm gonna do that for is to protect the short grain tear out here. Again, quick and thick is just the ticket. A Little bit of glue. Oh, that's gonna be perfect. So that's it, I'm done. So. It was a great little project. It put me to work in the shop, but it's within the scope of almost any woodworker. I'm Rob Johnstone. Thanks for watching.